what we're doing here is a test program to see if we can do a mini drive-in theater at the Beltrami County Fairgrounds. There's a lot of 4-H kids, and I suspect some adults have never been to a drive-in movie. So our goal is to do a drive-in movie one night before winter gets here. But we need to do some testing first. We were given a screen, should say donated, a screen by the Bemidji Theater, west of town, courtesy of Dwayne Black, and we were given a old video projector, courtesy of Bob Moore of River Cinema Theaters in East Grand Forks. So this afternoon and tonight, we need to set up the screen, which is a bit of a job, and then the projector, the sound system, the sound system goes over your car radio, a couple of speakers, and then run the video when it gets dark to make sure everything's going to work well, and then we'll have drive-in movie night for the 4-H kids. Our first stop is to pick up the movie screen, which we have temporarily stored in the Forestry Education Center. And stick it in the back of the trailer, and of course, half of it's going to hang out, but we don't have far to go. The nearest drive-in theater to us right now is Warren, Minnesota. He updated his system by putting in a new video projector. It's difficult to make money. Your season is short, you only have one showing. But a few places, want to run movies like they used to do in the 1950s. By setting up a screen, 25 by 12, in the Bleacher Stadium area of the fairgrounds, well, it's not as big as the drive-in theater screens, but it at least it gives you a feel of what it's like to watch a movie from the car. Only this time, instead of having speakers on post that you pull up to, we're going to use FM radio in your car. In our case, 94.1 on your car radio. Next, we drive over to the stadium, or I should say the bleacher area. That's where they hold the rodeo and, and events during fair week. We're going to use the bleachers to hold the screen and then put the projector out in the field. Now, that's where you're going to park your cars. And you can park it as close as as far back as you want. There's a bit of a, a, a bit of a job to get this screen up, so we're going to show that so we have some idea what we have to go to just to get this drive-in theater going. Now, this is a test run. There'll be about 10, 15 cars, and we'll look at a short video, about 25 minutes long. It has to do with an aviation event at the Air, Air, at Moberg Air Base in, in, uh, in August. But it gives us the chance to look at, listen to the sound, look at the picture, and see if there are any bugs that have to be changed. And if not, then we'll select the night to have drive-in movie night for the 4-H kids.
Our first job was to figure out how to hang it from the, uh, the rafters up there. You can see the yellow ropes hanging down. We didn't want to get a cherry picker to get up there because we wanted to be able to do it ourselves. So we came up with an idea using PVC pipe with a pulley and we put it up with a pole. Now we needed four of these pulleys because they have to pull up a big PVC pipe and the pipe by itself is not very strong. The uh, screen would be fastened by bungee cords to the PVC pipe and then pulled up by the four ropes. The screen is about nine, 11 feet high by 20 feet wide and we had to be careful rolling this around so we didn't catch any slivers from the wood because the vinyl, even though it was somewhat heavy, would tear fairly easy. Now, if you looked at it closely, there's thousands of little holes in the screen and that was to let the sound through when it was hanging in the movie theater. Now we're going to unroll it, fold it over and tie it to that PVC pipe which is a bit difficult to see on your right on the fence and then it'll be pulled up with the ropes. Well I thought the uh, cardboard roller that came off the screen would stay in place while I worked on the screen but it didn't. Gravity got it and took it away. While the PVC pipe which is used to hang the screen on is not being used, we had it tied to the guardrail. So the next thing we had to do was loosen this up and swing it over. Once on tide, we brought the uh, PVC pipe up about six inches and tied it again. And then we're going to bring the screen over and bungee cord it to the uh, bar. Now there's two sides to the screen, front and the back, and how you tell the difference is the back side's got four black stripes down the side. I'm not sure what the surface difference is and that makes a difference when you project on one side over the other, but we want to use the uh, front side. What I had to watch out for here is to make sure it didn't get caught on any, any of the boards or slivers and uh, cause a slight snag or rip on the screen. Now it goes a lot easier with two people, but I wanted to try it by myself to see what, if I could actually do this. Uh, I won't do it again. I'll get a second person to help me set it up and to help me take it down.
Now the next item is to get these black bungee cords somewhere in the bottom of this bucket and fasten the screen to the bar. As I pull the screen up, you can see a little black line. That indicates that's the back of the screen. Now we have the times taking task of, of uh, putting a bungee cord on every hole to the PVC pipe. Now we're going to speed the process up here on the video. This is uh, takes way too much time and really boring to watch. But it's important that we get the screen straight or stretched tight so there's no wrinkles. And wrinkles really do show up when the image is projected onto it. The reason we had to use four ropes to pull up the screen is because the flex in the PVC pipe. If we use a steel pipe or even a big aluminum pipe, uh, the aluminum has flex also, and the steel pipe is just too heavy to, to just use two ropes to pull it up. So we chose PVC and four ropes, and it works out pretty good. Right now I'm in the process of pulling the screen tight. Because once it's up in the air, you can't get at it again, and it's too big a job to bring it back down. I'm going to leave this piece of video on the, on the long side, because it's a bit of a job to get this thing up there. Uh, obviously, two people can do it very easy. Four is better, of course. Uh, so I'm going to let the video camera run as we try to get this thing up. I, I could have chose a better rope. I've got this yellow polymer rope, or whatever it's made of, and it's a bit slippery to hang on to. If I got a heavier nylon rope, the knots would have been easier to make and it would have been easier to hang on to. But the cost factor was important and it was a lot more money to go with the heavy nylon. So I chose this yellow, whatever it is, uh, now I'm paying the price because it's slippery and hard to hang on to. The next step now is to get these little black bungee cords and tie the bottom of the screen to the safety railing here on the stage and then pull it up tight and we have a flat movie screen.
Well, sometimes things don't go just right. I almost lost control of the rope by the sag there on the right. I need to find uh, his measuring stick on here. I've got, I've got to measure with a tie rod. I've got to measure 90 feet <coughs> from the screen to the protector. Uh, further than that, uh, it won't fill the screen too close. It overfills the screen. My zoom on the protector is very small, so I need to be pretty close. And when I ran the test, it was about 90 feet back. So, I'll throw this on the ground. And, uh, walk out there and pick it up and make my mark. The reason knowing the exact distance from the screen to the projector is important is there's a limited amount of zoom. And if you're too far back, the image will, won't fill out the screen. And if you're too close, well, then you can't zoom the lens back far enough. So it's important to be right in the middle of the zoom so you can get the picture bigger than the screen or littler than the screen. And I didn't know what it was, so I just picked a number I thought was right, and it turned out to be right on the button. Put a stake in the ground to mark the spot so when I came the next night I knew exactly where to put the trailer. We'll try 80 feet. truck around and have the back of the trailer right here so you have the trailer and the truck and we'll start from there and then we'll move it in or out depending on how the image is. So we'll set up the antenna and uh, check out the FM radio. This is the antenna. We'll go on a 10 foot pole. We're going to unhitch the trailer, put this up, and drive around and see how good the signal is. Then it goes in the pipe, and the pipe goes into some tenor mount. Oops, I'm let the cable down first. The FM transmitter comes with an antenna on the box 
but inside of a metal trailer it's not going to get very far and that's the reason we have a external antenna. It turned out to be a got quite a ways. It, uh, was able, I was able to receive the signal down by Noel's on 071. This will go in the hole in the bottom of the trailer with the power and everything else. And then we'll see what kind of range we got. We weren't sure if we needed uh, loudspeakers also besides broadcasting over the FM radio in the car. So we decided to put up a couple of speakers in the back of the truck and uh, have it be part of our shakedown crews. It turned out to be we really didn't need the speakers, so that was a good thing. It saved a lot of time and a lot of wiring. Now, in the meantime, we have to set the table up inside the uh, trailer. We couldn't carry the projector in the back because the trailer bounces too much and it could do a lot of damage. A lot of electronics in that projector, so I had to protect it. Well, I think it's hooked up. Let the generator settle down. Get it on the car radio, but don't get it on the portable radio. I'll have to drive the truck around to see what kind of reception we have. Well, the portable works now. I had it on the wrong band. Uh, we, we drove around the fairgrounds, only on the far side did we lose the signal, and all we care about is right in here. So. Our audio test is complete. Yeah, now we have to wait for dark. Let me shut this down. Oh, uh, okay. Have to wait till dark to figure out the distance to the screen. So we'll pack this part up. So all we have to do is the video part. The sound system works. We're going to go get a bite to eat, kill some time, and come back here about 8 o'clock. It'll be dark at 8.30, and then get the distance to the screen set of the projector. Put a stake in the ground, and then tomorrow we know exactly where to go, and everything will fit. We have to take the screen down tonight, which is a pain in the neck in the dark, uh, but I can't leave it up because the wind could tear it apart. That's a pretty expensive screen. Get the projector and put it on here. <clears throat> Leave it in the truck where it's nice and soft. There's too much bouncing back here. It's heavy. Cables and the DVD player. We don't care about audio. We're just going to do image. <coughs> and then we'll fire up the generator. Plug it in. But we do need a, need a DVD player so we can have a moving image. And as soon as we get this set up, wait for it to be dark, and then find out where the trailer has to be and put a stake in the ground to mark the spot so we know for tomorrow night exactly where to pull the trailer. Got to put the wood underneath to get the projector up 
but I don't know how high. So we've got some shims, and that's what we'll find out tonight. Uh, the angle, how many shims. So tomorrow night we park in the exact spot and put this under here and we're ready to go. Still too much daylight to see an image on the screen. Another hour to go. What time is it now? It's uh, 6.49 and another hour, 15, hour 20. And then we'll see what happens. I put the generator on the ground because if it's in the trailer it vibrates the projector and I don't know what it'll do to it. Uh, tomorrow night the generator goes in the back of the pickup uh, the covers rolled off back of the pickup to keep the noise down and uh, we'll run on, on generator power because I don't I gotta run a long plug long cable to plug something in somebody drives over and spins the wheel and pulls the plug out uh, I don't mind losing the power but once the projectors on that bulb is hot and if it loses the power it gets really hot and it can blow up or blow out or whatever so I, I gotta have dependable power. And that's it. Now, let's see, it's 8 o'clock. May not be dark enough, but we're gonna give it a try. Should wait to 8.30. Well, maybe we'll just try a little bit now. See what happens. It's 8 o'clock, <clears throat> got another half hour to go. I thought there was enough image to be able to see it, the edges, but uh, it didn't work. As long as there's no mosquitoes, it's not a problem. So we have to wait a half hour and we'll try it again. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm getting anxious, so we'll try it again. <clears throat> pick it up. Now, too much light behind it, and I can figure out where it goes. Well, it looks like I parked in the right place. Uh, there's still too much light coming from behind, but I got the, tra the trailer in the exact spot by luck. It's not even dark behind the stadium yet, so it looks like 8.30 is a good time to start the movie. And the next night, it was movie night. The 4-H kids had a chance to go to a drive-in theater like it was in the 1950s. We had plenty of cars, popcorn, and soda. Great night. <laughs>